Some advice for people trying to decide between veterinary medicine and human medicine. I'd say that you should do ex work experience in both or, or either and like talk to vets and talk to doctors try to see if their lifestyle is something that you are up for and you want to have what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think the best thing to do is get as much work experience as you can. Mm -hmm. It looks really good on your personal statement or your CV anyway, but mm -hmm. you will never really understand what the job looks like. Yep. And the weirdest thing is that I did so much work experience beforehand. And so I did have an idea, but even then, like I just didn't know what I was kind of essentially getting myself into until I started it on day one. Yeah. So get as much work experience, speak to as many people as you can, or watch as many YouTube videos as you can. Mm -hmm. So that you're like, you know exactly what you're going into from mm -hmm. the jump. And also like you were mentioning earlier, like your intentions of going into veterinary medicine mm. or human medicine has to be really clear. Yeah. Because I think, because we've said, you know, the salaries and things, they, are, they shouldn't be the main driver because it's not much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what should drive you is your desire to help others um, and your passion for medicine and like your interest in the science of the yeah. medicine. I think that will definitely get you uh, it will. to it survive will. through your career and your vet school. Because there school. are so many pitfalls, I think, probably in both of our profession. There's so many. And unless you have that kind of absolutely love for it mm. you will constantly be worn down every time you get screamed at by a consultant every time or a client, or a client mm. every time you like your work you work like three hours past when you're meant to be there you will be like resentful to the, your job because mm. you're like why am i here when i'm not getting paid that much mm. but if you have that clear love for it in the beginning you'll realize actually like it's fine yeah i'm actually you're making a difference it. yeah, yeah. You're making an impact to people's lives yeah. yeah so another question is what is it like being a minority in veterinary medicine or human medicine so i would say being a minority i kind of like divide it into like what's it like with patients what's it like with my colleagues mm -hmm. when it comes to patients being a minority is definitely a big positive i think that in general i don't know i don't think i'm as intimidating maybe i think just a small woman mm -hmm. who happens to be black i think i i'm not very imposing or intimidating i think i can relate to people if you've ever had that minority feeling before in the past i think it's sometimes you feel a bit easier to talk to a minority doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is how people feel, but I've kind of gotten that impression. Mm -hmm. And I think it's quite nice for when a black person's in pain and they see me, it's like, I will take their pain seriously. I will recognize and empathize with them in the way and listen to them in a way that maybe they felt like they haven't been listened to mm -hmm. by other groups of people. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to colleagues, I do think being a black woman or a small woman is unfortunately mostly negative mm -hmm. i have had like um a handful of experiences where i just feel like um i don't know maybe not so much like looked at as um and i think also my age doesn't help as well or the fact that i look younger than i am mm -hmm. i think all of these factors together maybe people speak to me sometimes in a way that's like not very nice <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's so bad yeah. that's really but bad. i think maybe it's just one of those things and i think as people come to know you and they get to realize you and they get to realize that you're not bad at what you do you do mm -hmm. kind of build that rapport up eventually and people do trust you eventually mm -hmm. but i do think like at the beginning i have had a handful of experiences and i'll probably talk about this in more detail okay yeah in, in another, another video, video. Yeah. but like where people will just be like quite short or short with me or they'll like be like they'll tell you off for things and yeah. you'll just be like Oh, it's a bit babe. exasperating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How have you found it? Well, so my own, my experience is limited to vet school, so I guess mm. it's kind of different environment because in a medical setting, mm. people are high high stress, so yeah. been working long hours. Yeah. Um, and but that doesn't mean they can be rude to you. Like that's no. not right. That's not fair. Um, uh, but for me, being at vet school, uh, at the veterinary profession, as you may know, according to a 2019 report. The profession is only 3% um, BAME, so Black, Asian, Minority, ethnicities. So when I was doing placements, it was definitely hard to find someone who like was a person mm. of color oh. or looked like me. So there's definitely a need for more representation in vet med. But um, in vet school, people were generally really nice, like all the vets, staff, students, we all like really generally get along mm. and I've never felt any discrimination which i'm really thankful for but i when i come to the workplace then i think 
I will see what happens, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully things will be alright. Mm. But I think um, I've only had some interesting comments by some farmers when I'm on farm placements because obviously I'm in those areas where there's less diversity so they were curious to know where I was from and they weren't rude or anything but it did make me feel a bit uncomfortable because I have yeah. to like explain myself and they would ask interesting questions. But yeah, that's a video for another day. All in all, for now, I would say it's a positive for me but we'll see when I start work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I guess just uh, some stats as well for mm. like BAME. I don't have like any specific numbers, but I do know that like black and black doctors are more likely to be referred to the GMC. Um, really? Yeah, like a lot more likely black doctors are more likely to kind of um, like face bullying in the working environment. Face bullying. Um, like there are like a lot less. Um, I mean, I, definitely in my medical school, there was only eight black people in a year of about 130 <gasps> yeah so it's like you are kind of always in the minority and sometimes i think it's easier with patients always i've never had any issues with patients but with the working environment i think it is a, maybe just a little bit trickier mm. for for black people but yeah <laughs> but that that doesn't mean if you're a minority person that you don't want to that you're scared and you don't want to go into the profession i feel of like course, if yeah. you if you're passionate about it you should still do it don't let that put you off yeah, I mean it, it won't let you put it won't put you off at all anyways. But I think it's always important to just like know that you're amazing and know that you're here to like give a unique perspective and people are willing and wanting to hear from you and your your perspective on yeah. them and their health. <laughs> Lastly, advice for people who want to get into veterinary medicine or human medicine. I'd say that work experience again so not only for your personal statement or your CV, it's also for yourself to know that it's right for you. Also, I'd say that you need to have a strong background in science and maths. And so make sure you have the grades required to get into the universities that you want. And also make sure that you prepare well in advance for interviews and any admissions tests to stand a high chance of getting into vet school. Yeah, I guess for med school as well, I would call around every single university that you want to apply for, make sure you are 100% sure what they want, what they really care about, if they're really like work experience based, if they're very much like UK CAT based, if they're very much, um, you know, grades, yeah. and then just literally just have a game plan, check these things off your list, make sure you're getting people early for work experience, calling people early. Make sure that like you have a good group of friends that are like pushing you on and it really is just about your grades so much of it is just get the grades and just figure out the best way to study for you mm -hmm. um so that's that's all the questions i think i yeah. hope that helped we'll definitely be doing more videos on like in a more detail on mm -hmm. medical school and wet school and other experiences that we've had yeah thanks so much for staying all the way till the end so if you want more doctor and skincare content be sure to head over to cami's channel which is Dr. Fab. Yep, and if you want more vet content, stay in this channel. <laughs> and see you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Coffee. <laughs> okay, that was really good. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>